Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you are in this fine planet. We're here with another exciting edition of Wowza Live with our host, Ned Dennison. Hello, everyone. I'm the chairperson of the International Marathon Swimming Hall of Fame. We've, we've done oh, 40 or 50 of these interviews with honorees. This one's going to be a bit, bit different. Um, the interview is going to be with the grandson of an honoree. Uh, the picture you see on the screen is Albilo Couto from Brazil as a, as a young swimmer and as a not so young swimmer. Steve, could you page to the yeah. next picture? Oh. You may need to speak as well to show it. Yeah, here we go. So, so Daniel, please, please start by telling us about your grandfather, the swimmer, and, and the man who was your grandfather. Okay, uh, first of all, I'd like to say thanks for inviting me. It's a great honor to uh, talk with you guys. And congratulations, Ned and Steven, for how are you doing for the marathon history. Uh, my grandfather was a man that really enjoyed marathon swimming. Now, imagine that in the 50s or 60s, there were a few races in South America. So every time that the open water swimming season starts all over the world, he had to took a lot of hours flying and even more hours inside buses, trains, cars, just to take place in every race. So could it be uh, easier for American or a European swimmer, but for him, it means a couple of days traveling for each race. And they really love it. Uh, you can imagine that it, he only swam as an uh, amateur swimming. So he, take, he took a lot of hours flying, raced the swings, Sometimes he wins the professionals and he must deny all the prizes, all the titles, because he was just allowed to swim, to swim as an amateur uh, by the Brazilian government rules. And uh, he started in minor races in Italy and England. And many years before he was swimming by the International Long Distance Swimming Federation uh, that allows non-professional swimmers. And he did it for 30 years almost. And uh, sometimes he swam by the World Professional Marathon Swimming Federation in North America, uh, but without battle and the ranking system. Uh, so this way he traveled all over the world and uh, when you read the old magazines, old newspapers and uh, that says that he swam for 40,000 of kilometers, you can imagine how far he did this. What was your relationship with your grandfather? Uh, in the early days, I have no much contact because our hometown is an inland city. We have no lakes, no rivers, no seas. So he always out, was out. Uh, but in 1995, that when he kind of retired from working with marathon swimming, he came back to our city and he started to teach swimming lessons at uh, our local recreation center. So uh, my cousins and I we started these lessons and uh, he was our teacher. And uh, I remember there was a big poster at the entrance hall saying, come swing and learn with the great Abilio, the English Channel former champion. Uh, we were so excited, we, we had a great time. Did you know anybody that traveled as much as your grandfather? You were in an inland city in Brazil. I'm guessing that not a lot of people were traveling the world. Was he, was he just kind of this heroic figure that had conquered the whole world for you? Well, uh, maybe there is a, a few swimmers that did that, but in, according to the Spanish newspapers in 1965, 
uh, only he and Florence Chadwick have reached that 40,000 of kilometers and did so many swings. So one of the one of the things that's uh, it's fascinating about both you and, and your grandfather is you have created a, a website, a shrine, um, in honor of your, your grandfather's swims and accomplishments. And it's, it's one of the things we've been talking about for a couple of years and encouraging all honorees as they, as they get older. You've got a box of records in your attic or your basement. You've got a couple of old trophies. Um, you know, at some point, if you don't do something with this, they're just going to disappear and the history of the sport will be lost. Tell us about um, what was involved in creating this website. Um, were these records kind of cherished jewels for you? How did, how did this all come about? Yeah, you're totally right. Uh, and if there is something, some uh, past swimmer right here listening to us, I, I pray for him, please do the same. Um, after my grandfather died in 1998, uh, he got sick with cancer and he passed away. Uh, my father and I, we went to my grandfather's place to pick up some stuff, that kind of thing you have to do when a relative died. And uh, I found uh, a box, uh, inside this box have an, an old memory book. And this memory book was full of newspapers cut and pictures. And I started to read and I realized that my grandfather was uh, something more than that guy that made the English Channel Swings. Uh, there was a lot of achievement there, but was totally forgotten. Uh, nobody was aware of that. And so I started to mix of this old stuff and trying to publish. And, and I remember uh, the website began something like two weeks after he passed away. Uh, but the original project is, is, was to start this website while he was living. But time didn't work so fine to me and it was a, a, a dead uh, effort. One of the things that uh, you and I collaborated on recently is we were putting together a list for um, all of the honorees who had swum um, Gibraltar, and it's on the website today. And uh, Gibraltar appeared in your father's biography, but your father wasn't on the Gibraltar list. Not exactly. Um, so we kind of figured out between us what, what the years were. And you said, yeah, that's, that's his name, but it's, it's kind of spelled a little bit differently. And we also found out that when Gibraltar had assembled their records, they, they had the year wrong by one year. Yeah. So the Gibraltar um, Honor Organization was delighted to have the correct spelling. They were delighted to have the, have, have the, have the appropriate year. And it's, it's a good example where um, everybody tries to keep good records, but only when three or four different sources start to compare records can we... Uh, yeah. One of the things that uh, we, we came across the other day were pictures of you attending the International uh, Swimming Hall of Fame in Florida. I think the year was 2002. Uh, your grandfather was being inducted and you were representing him. Uh, tell us about the trip, the experience, and, and, and the feeling you had from that. Yeah, uh, first of all, I have to talk about Dave Petronek and Bob Duenko. God bless them. Um, these guys really helped me out. Uh, in 2000, when I wrote to the Hall of Fame, uh, these two guys helped me with all the process of all the bureaucracy to nominate my grandfather. And uh, uh, one year later, in 2001, they sent me an email saying, 
And congratulations, your grandfather was approved with unanimous decision. And it was huge, it was great. Uh, I remember that I said to my father, uh, we must go there. Uh, it's a great event, it's huge, and uh, we have to bring something special to this event. And that's why came the idea to offer, to donate the English Channel World Record Trophy to the museum. And uh, we had a, a great time over there, great dinner, great audience. And uh, in the end of my speech, when I offered the trophy, the English Channel World Record Trophy, people there gave me standing ovation. And it was a great time of my life. I mean, Gary Hall Jr. was there. And it was a great time. People there were so kind. Um, they gave me rides all days, rides between the airport, the hotel, the Hall of Fame. Uh, and Bob helped me with the travel services. And uh, he gave me a Paul McCartney ticket for a concert in Fort Lauderdale. So I always will have good memories about these two guys and the Hall of Fame ceremonies. It was a, a great honor. Um, just for the people who might not be aware, um, your grandfather swam from France to England. And then 14 days later, he swam the other way to set a world record in 1959. Um, and the, the, the trophy you're talking about is the trophy to commemorate that swim. Um, yeah. you're, you're one of, of several people over the years that have arranged with the Hall of Fame to present them with memorabilia. They have an active library. Um, and if you ever go to the hall, you, you just spend hours looking at things and you go, you know, that was Florence Chadwick's swimming suit and those were Gertrude Ederle's goggles and it's, it's fantastic. The only thing that we ask is that you, you check, that people check in advance before they start sending things to the Hall of Fame. Uh, but it's, it's a great way to, to, to put those memories uh, for the future. Yeah, yes. Uh... I think my grandfather was so much happier to have this trophy over there in the Hall of Fame than my personal shelf. And then, and then finally, um, tell us about the influence that your grandfather had on Brazilian open water swimming. Um, we, we recently interviewed uh, Igor de Souza, who, who speaks, who speaks fondly of your grandfather. What, what do you think his legacy is in Brazil? Well, it, it's kind of hard to describe when the, you realize that he passed his whole life for marathon swimming. I mean, he had to sell all of his stuff to travel aboard and to race all over the world. And uh, he, he had to make great achievements to impress the Brazilian media. And with this, with these achievements, he, he kind of uh, took some, um, I forgot the word, I'm sorry, uh, influence. He took his influence just to show the open water events. So he started it all. The first departments, the Brazilian swimming bodies did not have an open water department. So he created the first coast, the first rules, the first championships, he started it all. And he passed his whole life dedicating to the open water swimming. Daniel, we've, we've reached the end of our time. I want, to I want to thank you on, on behalf of the uh, International Marathon Swimming Hall of Fame. We, we spend a lot of time trying to preserve records and we, we talk about creating a shrine to honor these, these individuals in the sport. And, and you have done just an amazing job with your grandfather's legacy. So on behalf of the sport, thank you very much for keeping that alive. Uh, I must say thank you to you guys, for you, Ned, for you, Stephen, and for what they made it, what Bob Dwenko made it. Uh, you guys are doing so much well 
to preserve the sport. And congratulations for you too. Thank you very much.